All right, watch out. Brake pad pins, stainless steel, general for the use of. Time for a bit of maintenance. Welcome back to the Hoy's Garage. Okay, now that, focus, there it is, now that is a brake pin and as you can see it's got a socket cap in it or allen head if you wish, allen screw for an allen key etc, you can see all that and that is what holds the brake pads into the back caliper of my Tiger and your bike probably too. A very common part, it's just known as a brake pin. Very simple. Now, every now and again, you get problems where you put your Allen key in and you'll turn it and that will be so seized up and so jammed, you'll bugger it. You'll just ream out that end and then it just turns around and around and that's what's happening in the back of the Tiger. And that's easy enough to fix when it's a regular socket cap. Now that there, come on focus baby. Focus, big camera, right. Now that itself, if you ream out that end, come on, sorry about this, it's not focusing, that's better. Now if you ream out the end of that, so that it's just a big welly booted hole, and putting the Allen key in doesn't do anything, it just spins around and around, you can't get it off. If that were to hold on a casing or something like that, then that's easy. All you do is you take a drill bit, the same size as the shank, so you've got the shank there, you take a drill bit, the same size as that shank, and you simply drill into the head that's reamed out. And as you drill that in with a drill, that will eventually ream out the hole and it will take this head and it will just it will drill it off and you'll end up with a stump. Then the casing or whatever you're trying to get off will just be able to be removed and it will expose you know, that much stump. You can get a pair of grips on it or a stud extractor or whatever and you can then remove the thread. So that's quite easy. If it's something that's bolting something else on, if it's a fastener, then that's easy. You can just drill the head off and I did a video on that. And if you never saw it and you want to see it, let us know and I'll send you a link. But that, if you've got a standard Allen screw or socket cap, if you want to use the proper engineering term, then that's easy. You just drill the head off with the, with the, with the right side drill bit. Job done. But you can't do that with brake pins because as you can see, the way a brake pin works is the thread, uh, there it is, right, the thread is all on the head itself. So if you drill the head off, you're drilling into the threaded part of the caliper body. So the problem is that's screwed into the aluminium caliper body, which is delicate. If you screw the thread up on the aluminium caliper body, you've then got a helicoil it, which again is a pain in the ass, and potentially there might not be enough meat in the metal to drill out larger, and then put a helicoil in it anyway, so you can have a new caliper, which could be colossally expensive. So getting one of these out is a delicate operation, they do like to jam up. So I'm gonna show you today a very simple method I've always used. You can use something similar. As you can see, you can't drill anything. You drill into that head, you'll drill through here, that will, it won't come off because that's what's jammed. And all this stuff that's jammed up on the pads, that will stay in there, then you really can't get it out. But let me show you a little bit more on the bike, so you know what I mean. This is what I was doing. Back caliper, jamming up a little bit. Time to take the pads out, get the toothbrush, soap and water, da da da, yada yada, you've seen it all in loads of different videos. Clean the caliper, put it back together, and then the brakes will work again. But I couldn't do that because there's two of these brake pins there. One there and one there. And they go through the monoblock caliper. This is a piece, this is a monoblock caliper. Normally, if the pins seize, one of the ways to get them out is to actually break the caliper into its two cast parts. Most calipers, four-pot calipers, any dual-sided pumping piston where you've got two opposed pistons that both pump, you will have two cast halves and they'll be bolted together. And then you take out the bolts, they bolt them into one piece, 
you, and you literally take the caliper off the pins rather than the pins out of the caliper. So you just extract the lot, clean it, put it all back together again. But this is a monoblock, it's one piece. That's it, That's, this is all cast. There's a line there, let me show you this. Right, no penny today, I'm afraid. All right, check that out and see what I mean here. Now, that's better. You've got a little cast line there, but that is not a break point. That does not split along there. That's a casting flash, literally, where the thing was cast in a, in a mold, and that's where the mold joined. But this piece over the back is all one piece, so I can't separate that. That break pin there is reamed out, and I'll show you a little bit closer. There's your Allen key. It goes in. And that is just moving that much before it even touches. And if you try and undo it, it just reams around in a circle. It's, it's not going anywhere. That one is okay. That one moves. There we are. Got a little bit of movement, so I'll really take that one out at the end. I'm going to leave it in there for now because that's the one we've got to deal with. So let me just put you back up there. Right. That's it. Okay, so this is going to be the most hardcore method to get one of these out. You really, honestly, have very few options with this. There's not a great deal you can do. You can't split the caliper, can't drill the head off. And lots of you in the past have emailed me and said, what do I do? And I've given you these two options, and hopefully they've worked for you. Option one is to take some JB Weld. Now, we all know JB Weld, fantastic stuff. It's a two-part mix-up, gluing, metal bonding stuff. And you just mix it up put a bit in the end, squidge that in there nice and hard and give it the requisite time that it needs to set and cure and then you should be able to undo it, hopefully. But I've got a JB Weld and I have tried it once and it didn't work. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weld it. <laughs> I'm gonna take an old cheap Allen key and I'm gonna weld it into that hole. Now there is a little bit of risk with this and that is that the heat from welding could crack the aluminium casting. It's not likely to, because the aluminium itself is pretty robust. And remember, it's a brake caliper. It's used to getting hot, extremely hot, especially a back brake, but possibly not that hot, not glowing red hot. So we're gonna see. Um, there's rubber parts in there, but I'm hoping, and I'm hoping I'm doing this as I go. I've only done this once and it was quite successful, but it is fraught with danger to the caliper. But having said that, the worst that can happen is I have to get another caliper from eBay, and I think I'll see them for about 25 quid. It's not expensive, a rear caliper. In fact, that caliper fits on about 20 different bikes, so I can soon find one. But I'd like to get that pin out if I can. So, let's hook the welder up, weld one of these in, and see if I can get it. Actually, I'll weld that end in, because then I'm clear. Obviously, if you glue or weld that end in, and find you can't get it past here, or something like that, then you've got to cut it out. Oh, it's just, you know, think ahead. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to weld that in there and see if I can get this out. Wish me luck. as much as the residue, all tools come with a kind of protective residue on them. Clean all that off first, you're gonna weld it. Obviously you can't weld through it. It's be a bad weld and then you'll defeat the object. So clean that up. Again, gotta be kind of apocalyptic on this really. That caliper's toast unless I can get that pin out. So if in the process of taking it out, I have to scuff up the paint on it, doesn't really matter. The alternative is it goes in the bin anyway. So all scuffed up. Clean the head of the bolt, show you a bit closer. Now. That's better. Right, 
cleaned all the head of this up so it's nice and spotless, ready to weld. Cleaned that up as well. And where that goes in now, it's as you can see, that is pretty bad. That's that's the right size. Next size up doesn't even go near it. Um, so that's the right one. And that is as sharp. All right. That is a sharp, unused Allen key. I've not used that at all. So there's no wear on it or anything. That's given it its best chance. So that's it. And what I'm going to do with it is kind of pull it down that way a bit. It still clears underneath here. And that gives me a space, a couple of places around the top to poke, hopefully, poke the weld wire in a bit and zap it. So that should do it. Put a couple of tack welds either side. And I'll cross our fingers. Right, just one more point. Obviously, as you saw, if you're welding anything, if you're welding anything on a motorbike, no matter what it is, or a car, always disconnect the battery. Um, if you don't know this, quite simply, a welder works on voltage. A big welder works on voltage. It sticks massive amounts of amps into that, and it causes an electrical arc which then melts the wire, which welds the job. And obviously putting all that electrical current into the bike that's connected to the battery, that's connected to the ECU, you know, the fuel injection computer, it's not gonna do any good, is it? It could even cause terrible catastrophic damage to an ECU or to, a, to, the, to the IC igniter, or any of the bike's ignition system can suffer terribly. So if you're gonna weld anything on a bike, because you're putting all that electrical ampage into the metal, which is the earth, you're kind of crossing it. You kind of, it's, it's a bit like taking, a spanner from the live terminal of the battery and putting it across to the frame, arcing it and then holding it there. That's the damage that you'll do. You do obviously terrible damage with that. So if you're doing any work with always disconnect the battery. That's an absolute taken as red. So let's get this in. I'm also gonna cover the tire up as well. Um, Mainly because any, on a MIG welder, any sparks jumping away, if that goes on a tire wall, that will burn its way into the tire wall and weaken the tire. So I'm gonna cover up all the rubber as well for the sake of safety, all right? Expand, it might expand the alloy away from the steel. When you get it, when you get it welded on and start to turn it, don't just lean on it again because obviously the Allen key itself is made from high carbon steel so the process of welding it on, heating it up to about 1300 degrees that will make it very brittle so it ain't over yet but I've got movement on it and I just keep going backwards and forwards until all the threads clear which is almost these now and then there's still an element of crud that's on the pin that's holding it into the pads. So kind of working it out, brake cleaner up in there, kind of dissolving all that. It's going to be more and more free now. There we go. Obviously, you can't use that again. 
that's toast. So that's why you need to get new ones, like I did, before you start. And now that's clear, all I'm gonna do is off, I'm not gonna bother filming this because I've done this, well, oh God knows how many times. I think caliper cleaning videos are one of our biggest. We've got one up around a third of a million hits now, so I'm not gonna do it anymore. It's the toothbrush, it's the bucket of soapy water, it's pumping out the piston so you see the gum line around the dirt rim, that sort of ring of dirt around the piston. Get that all scrubbed off clean and shiny, and then make sure, usually with either a big pair of grips or a G-clamp, just get those pistons moving in and out so they're nice and smooth. That's just housekeeping, you could do that. It's an old video, I'm gonna bore you with it again. This was a trick to show you how to get these brake pins out. You can weld it on. If you haven't got the access to a welder, which many, many people don't, then JB Weld is a good alternative. And the trick, as I've just said, is once you get it moving, don't just lean on it, just, just gently, just do it with your hand. Just to, even if you have to sit there for two hours, you'll get a 20th of a turn more on it every time. Go back and forth, a bit more brake cleaner, back and forth. Don't use uh, Autos, um, don't use WD-40, don't use oil or grease or anything like that because in this environment, it's gonna go all over the brakes, it's gonna trash your pads anyway. So if you really wanna put new pads in, you can. These are virtually new. I did a video on fitting these a while ago. They're absolutely fine. So I'm gonna off camera now, I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna take that apart now, pull it off. Um, pull the other one out, take the pads out, clean them all up, put it all back together with these and some copper slip. And this is somebody asked the other day, what these are brakes and brakes are important. Why don't you put thread lock on there instead of copper slip? Copper slip means they'll fall out. Well, I hope this video has answered that. They really, really, really don't fall out. In fact, that's the point with these brakes. Any fastener around this area is going to actually seize in there. It's the crud and the heat cycle and the salt on the roads and the dust and that, it's all going to corrode them in there. So to prevent that, just use copper slip, copper ease, anti-seize, whatever product you choose to use, but something to stop it seizing, not to something to lock it in there, okay? Right, let's get this wound up, buttoned up, and then I'll show you what it's like this time. Right. There we go, done. Now on putting the pins in, I work them in as well. Like when you work them out bit by bit, I work them in as well. And that distributes the copper slip or anti-seize compound around the thread perfectly so it's all protected. There we are. Now that's got to the point where it's just seated. Inside there, the pin's got a chamfer and the hole is chamfered as well. So it goes in until it seats. Believe me, they will never fall out. Not on this earth, just do them up gently. Don't lean on it, monkey boy. All right, all you need to do, two fingers or finger and thumb, do them up till they seat, jobs are good. That's it. You can lean on them, they've probably got a torque setting, lots of luck getting them out. So many years I've done this, I've had grief get them out, I've, been, I've drilled them and buggered up calipers, and I've spent hours trying to get them out, and now I've found the right way to do it. Probably one in every 10 of these I do will seize up, and you have to do that. So there we are, that's all done. She's looking good, brakes are working. And don't forget, when you've had your calipers off, pump them back out, because if you've pushed the pistons right back so that the pads are away from the disc, first time you come to use the brake, you ride down the road, first time you touch the brakes, still nothing there, pedal will just sink to the bottom, and that's pretty scary. Um, so obviously pump it out so that the pads come out to the disc and they sit there and work in the regular position. All right, that's it. Let's get wrapped on. All right, I'm gonna call that done now. Um, now I hope that helps you. It wasn't about Triumph rear brake calipers, that one. Got loads of stuff on brake calipers, like I said. That was about using your initiative and getting a bolt out. That was no way that was coming out any other way than that. You can butcher it, you can try and drill down that, draw really carefully, almost out to the size of the thread, then chisel the remnants of the thread. Honestly, that's an aluminium thread that you're working in. You're just gonna cheese it, aren't you? It's not gonna last, and then you'll need new caliper, which is, goodness knows how much money. I've always had one belief. A mechanic is somebody who can get around a problem, a good mechanic, can get around a problem, use your initiative, a few tricks you might have learned, common sense, powers of deduction, work something out, think and come up with a solution that works. A row of certificates on the wall doesn't make you a mechanic, it makes you a technician. Technicians change things. They take the caliper off, throw it away, put a new one on, give the customer a bill. And that's you. And that's not really very fair, is it? So I prefer to get things done myself. Use some common sense. Imagine you've got a busted stud 
on your cylinder head, right? <laughs> How many times, eh? You take off that exhaust, you go like that, that little tiny piece of thread that holds your exhaust on, it corrodes, it gets hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, it heats cycles so many times, it gets brittle snap. And you've got half inch of it sticking out, and you can't get hold of it with much. What about getting one of them? A big socket cap bolt, that's a mild steel one. Go to an engineering shop and get a mild, you just go to your local bolt shop. I got that from uh, Allfix in Bournemouth, literally, they're about a pound each. And that big socket cap in the end there, you could shove that over the busted stud and then weld it round. And then you've got something you can really get hold of, haven't you? Ever so simple, put a nut, two nuts on the end, double nut it, then you can get a spanner on it. And you can take it out. Simple, isn't it? Okay. In my view, like I said, a mechanic is someone who can get around things, come up with things like that and make them work. I thought I'd show you that with you, I thought I'd share it with you. Another little bit of common sense, stainless steel. Don't use the zinc ones you get from the factory or the manufacturer, dealer, parts, supply, whatever, because they're rubbish. They're soft, which means that they ream out the minute you get stiff and tight and you put an Allen key in them and they corrode, which causes them to come stiff so you ream them out. So it's kind of a never ending cycle. The two things make them just the wrong decision stainless ones they're harder so therefore your allen key when it goes in doesn't ream out and they don't corrode anyway so you don't really need to lean on it do you simple on it stainless they were 15 pounds including postage which was a fiver so you pick up a pair of them for about tenner about six seven pounds on the net so honestly stainless steel brake pins and that's the same with so many things even the exhaust cylinder head studs the exhaust stud the ones going there get stainless ones if you can if you put stainless ones in they'll always come out when you need them to okay? Easy, isn't it? Right, there we are. General's back on the road. Take easy ride safe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.